Hello and welcome to episode 55 of Let's Talk Tactics. I'm your host, Zach Burrell. And I'm Luck. And this week, we will be going over Lucio, uh, Luartha, the winter version, and her VC. And then we'll hop right into some class match stuff, because we finally, finally have our class match this week. Uh, not a great week, personally, uh, for me, but, uh, you know, holidays are coming up. I got a lot of, you know, shopping to do last minute, have, you know, some parties here and there with family, so... Class match is gonna gonna be a squeeze for sure, but uh, I'm gonna make make it happen. Better than nothing. <laughs> no, absolutely. I better than this auto it, right? <laughs> I would rather not play my matches. <laughs> I just I I can't like ever admit that I put it on auto. Like at this point, I just I just can't. Nah, bad luck. Right. <laughs> or do like this like this like a uh, cheese strategy that you either win or lose within like the first five turns or something. That I mean, sometimes, yeah, uh, I can just be a dirty cheese blader on this one because uh, there is no double quicken this time. Well, no quicken at all. So, uh, should should be interesting for sure. But here, let's uh talk about these units real quick. So Lucio is an interesting one. Um, he grants us another AP TMR, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I believe the five to ten percent. Old was is five, right? So it's a little better than yep. old was, but not quite bells. Um, right. And it is an accessory that gives some defense and spirit instead of like agility and stuff. I like it. Um, it's it's a cool tool to have. Um, I I don't know. So I actually I haven't really played a whole lot today. Um, <laughs> how do you get him? There's there's a quest line you get him from, right? But yeah, it's free. what about like, his shards? Yeah, I like I I didn't look at all the quests. I haven't done it yet, but I I'm noticing that I'm getting shards from the quest. So I think you can like fully get him for free from the quests, and even the awakening material. I think he's also like. Like to awaken him, I heard it's like less cost than usual, so it's cheaper to awaken him, and they also give you part of his stuff, I think. Yeah, I mean, I saw guildies of mine already had him at ninety nine, and they're saying like easy build, whatever. So I knew there was something. I didn't know if it was all the way or if it was like most of the way, how that worked. Um, but but yeah, it sounds like it's it's sounding like it's gonna be um another one of those kind of freebies. Uh, he's a pretty cool freebie, honestly. Uh, yeah. His okay. HP isn't like super high, but he does have uh, a little bit of built-in defense. Um, he's got fairly okay agility, actually. He's at 57 and then 6 on the board. So, I mean, that puts him at like, what, 63? Uh, and then he's got a little bit more from his job stat. Like, he's, I don't know, he looks pretty good to me. Uh, Resistance-wise, going 15 slash, 10 pierce, 10 strike, and then minus 5 to missile magic. The minus 5s are a little bit, but not too bad uh he does have 50 percent charm resist we'd love to see that uh 50 sleep is somewhat relevant and could become more relevant in the future as we get more of these aoe sleep mages but um also the 10 percent slow is nice to have nothing super insane um but moving into his abilities um <laughs> i don't know if i'm I, I might need some help here so he has this weird, crazy method of like swapping between damage types on uh, either yeah. one of or some of his abilities based on the passive he chooses. So mm -hmm. really interesting uh, unit. The only thing I can say, so I guess let's start with his passive. So he has, I think it's Illumed, Illumed Swordmanship. Yeah. Uh, it's 24% uh, attack and 12 crit. Pretty good. Uh, then he's got normal monk stuff and the uh, Paladin defense and HP passive. Uh, but then he gets to Luminous Conditioning, which is HP 12% and move 1. Also, not really bad. Like, yeah. Uh, pr pretty good. <laughs> but then he has Tri-Calibration Strike and Tri-Calibration Pierce. So, if my understanding is correct, these are separate passives that you have to choose to equip. Yeah. And based on which one you have equipped, one of his abilities becomes either a Strike or Pierce attack. That's right. I wonder but what, he, what happens if you put both. <laughs> that is... Yes, I wonder if it doesn't let you, but it, that'd be something yeah. to try out for sure. But the only thing I'd say is he has some pretty decent passives. What are you giving up to do that? Like, it seems mm -hmm. you could give up a lot of stats just to have access to an additional damage type that, realistically, you can just sub Monk if you want some strike stuff. Uh, and Pierce is a little harder. There's I don't see any other Pierce in his kit. Just a weird, a weird trade-off to me. Like, I wish it was almost like another ability. And yeah. then, like, you use the ability, and then, like, maybe you get, like, a little menu, and you can pick which one you want to switch to or something, like, as a TP skill. Like, that'd be kind of cool. But giving up one of those passives, like, either 24% attack, move one in HP, defense in HP, it seems really rough to me. Well, um, so I'll be curious to see what 
people choose. I, I think that was like this is meant. I mean, it's a totally free unit. It's also easy to build. I think it's it's meant for like you know, uh, like beginner players or mm-hmm. tier players. And I think this is also meant as a PVE unit. I mean, despite the 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 four move which have PVPers like you know, uh, which manual players really like. But I think this is because that that skill that that prize striker skill is is a three hit skill, right? So I think it's it's oh, fair, for raids yeah. and stuff. Uh, so you have whatever type you want to build chains. I think that's that's the intention. Pretty good idea then. Um, but going over his other abilities, so his like quote unquote spam abilities: a uh, range four, height one, seven use, fourteen AP, uh, small damage tech. Uh, but it looks like it has additional crit chance, so that's kind of cool. Uh, then he has a really interesting buff: so uh, increase single target res by twenty for self. Uh, for three turns, that's good by itself, but then also increases agility by when it's maxed 40% for three turns whenever he crits. That's uh, really nice, <laughs> that's insane. <What> <laughs> like, 40 percent agility, and like I said earlier, he's at he's at like 57 base with six additional on his board. Like, yeah. he doesn't have low agility, so that 40% can be pretty hefty. Uh, I'd be curious to see what happens when he crits. And I mean, his first skill has some crit chance built in. It looks like his next skill, uh, besides the try one we just talked about, is Scintillating Edge, which has that 99%, which basically just means guaranteed crit, uh, with a 200 damage mod with, with a respectable range of three. Uh, so he hits that, gets the 40% agility. That's kind of nuts. Uh, then he has Domain of Light, which increases Slash. Resistance by 15 for allies and dark resistance by 25 for allies. And he gets to aim that within one space and then it does it in a cross. So we've talked about this before. Those kind of buffs are really valuable because when you're doing openers in PvP, it's really annoying to try to get like two plus buffs on the same units in that same cycle because you have to really weave how they either start or how they end up. Uh, It limits your movement. Whereas this sort of thing, you can kind of get away with doing a plus buff and then you can do it on his turn, then move instead of having to position a new way afterwards. So I really do like uh, abilities that give us that flexibility. Uh, then we have Luminescent Arc, which is his job. Oh, wait, is that, that's not job 25, is it? Oh, he doesn't have a job yes. 25. Oh, no, he has no 120. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, he only goes up to 99. Okay. That makes oh, sense. shit. <laughs> oh, so he literally just doesn't go to 120. Okay, I was wondering why he's such little health. Like 2,800, I'm like, I, I didn't think he was supposed to be squishy. Oh, this is interesting. I didn't realize he had... I was actually looking through. I'm like, where are the other upgrades? Um, Okay, so his other... His job level 12 skill is uh, Luminous Arc. So he reduces counter chance uh, for three turns, basically 100% on targets. Um, And then he hits kind of like in this like range of three and then like a little horizontal wave of three. So all three spots at once. Uh, 165, 165 mod, not bad. And also increases crit damage for self, which obviously... All of these together make him, uh, he's very incentivized to use crit. Uh, I'm probably still not putting on these garbage 15 crit offensive items in place of damage. I'll just use his guaranteed crit if I really need it to hit. But uh, Then on his job, or his uh, main jobs, sub-job option, he has Soothing Light, which restores HP and TP by 25% for ally. Uh, So it's not like ally and self, it's just whoever he targets. And also Dazzling Blade... um, is jamming thrust with much less range, uh, but yeah. it does hit piercing. It looks like in a line of three, which is pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't do piercing damage. I think that's actually a missed opportunity. If they want him to kind of be this, like he has a little bit of pierce, a little bit of strike, they should have made this like a pierce attack also, like a, yeah. like a sword stab or something. Um, the the way jamming thrust was supposed to be. <laughs> no, but, uh, castle's ability activation and chance to inflict stun. So, uh, really interesting unit. Oh, actually, real quick, I guess we can just say the. Uh, Monk and Paladin subjob, uh, the the level twelve ones he gets, he gets countdown, so the doom from Monk, and he gets saintly wall from Paladin, which is, if you're not gonna get immortal spirit, I mean saintly wall I think is what you want. The saintly cross is a little expensive and maybe not as impactful. So overall, uh, I like his kit. Uh, realizing he doesn't have a one twenty is disappointing. I'm curious to see if and when that happens. Uh, what are your thoughts on this unit? So I, I took a peek ahead at the JP set just now. I, mean, I, I was about to. He's already <laughs> released. Uh, his upgrades seem pretty, pretty nice. Uh, I don't know if you want to cover it now. or We can cover it now. Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. So um, do, did you want to go over it or do you want me to read it up? You got it. <laughs> All right. So his uh, his first skill, this is in JP, so I don't know the name of the skill, but the attack and crit uh, passive gets additional 40% 
death penetration and uh, 20 dark killer, which and that def defense penetration is really nice. Um, it's also kind of standard now, like most of these have it. So, but it's really nice that that he he gets that. And then, would you like to know what it's called with Google Translate? Sure. Asahi Ko Sword Technique Type Two. <laughs> <laughs> His original one is Asahi Sword Technique. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the monk passive is called the secret of hitting. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, um and then his uh his his basic attack uh in uh, it also decreases defense by 25. Um so I, I, I think those are the two upgrades and I and his, he also gets this, you know, his uh job level 120 skill, which decreases counter chance by That's the same and then... ability. Oh, is it? Okay, so where is this job one twenty skill? Uh I don't see one. <laughs> uh <laughs> I see a bunch of upgrades. He has an LB in JP as well. Yeah. Which he doesn't have here. What an interesting Yeah. Is, is he gonna be like a build him up over time kind of unit? Like this is weird. Maybe. Oh yeah, that's Luminous and Arc. Okay, so that's strange. Hmm. Huh. Weird unit. Well, he does but have the other ability, though. I, which I think is... he's a very good unit, though. Like, especially for like a starter player. Uh, the, like he seems very solid. He also seems like an off tank. Uh, and then he also gets taunting blade with his immortal with his uh, paladin sub. Anyway, it mm -hmm. makes like a pretty good off tank, whatever PDE tank. By the way, I just want to talk about these other passive names. These are great. Like, I have Google Chrome that you can like right click and translate basically pages to English. Oh sure. man! So his his passives in English are luminous conditioning, tri calibration strikes, and tri calibration pierce. That's his like, you know, the options. This <laughs> switches <just> to <laughs> uh, a series of inspirations. I believe that is the pierce one. Then the strike <laughs> one is inspir is inspirational continuous martial arts and striking. <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh, I mean. Man. Take over the world one day, right? <laughs> What's that? I said AI is going to take over the world one day, right? Especially with these translations. Yeah, we still have some like epic anime style like things to <laughs> announce as they just beat your ass. Uh, no, I I agree though. Very accessible unit. Uh, the your point about the triple hits, hundred percent can see that being a sort of everybody should have it. So you know, you know, if you don't have whatever for the raid, unless it's like a magic weak one, I guess uh, you can just throw this guy in there. So. I guess Medina you get for free though, right? So Medina and Lucio cover lots of things, but moving on to the holiday unit this year. So Luartha Winter. I have to say, I don't know. So Luartha was on the list of potentials, but I didn't think they'd actually pick her. Uh, I thought they'd pick someone like an older unit that hasn't been like thought of in a while, like Yerma or something. Uh, but I guess since they made, they wanted a wind character, picking Yerma might not make sense. So, um, Luartha is an interesting choice, and she also uh is another Pierce unit for the holidays. Yep. So I know we already have Winter Mashri uh kind of holding that down. I I guess we have what a strike. Yeah, we have a strike, a missile, a Pierce, and now we have an a slash. We should have had a mage or something, but we have another Pierce unit. Damn it! <laughs> but uh, did you pull for uh, Luartha? No, I, I mean I I would, but I like I I, I just don't have the with yours, so. Um, do you if want to talk about her, or do you want me to go on? Uh, yeah, I can talk about her. All right, cool. Um, I I think she's a she's a very good unit. Uh, but we, we will start with the TMR. Uh, so it's called Sacred Dress, and it gives ten defense, twelve crit, four hundred and thirty five HP. It's um, it's okay. It's it's it seems like a typical pop kind of stats. Um, the TMR skill gives you uh, wind attack 25 for three turns for allies and increases agility for three turns for allies as well. Um, it's it's okay. I think it, 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 it um, what's it called? There's, what's her name? Tifa has a similar kind of uh, a wind attack TMR as well. So it's kind of competing for it. If you don't have one, you can use the other. But because of the existence of Tifa's TMR, I don't think this one is as important or uh, as uh, high priority. Her uh, master ability is... Um, increases defense penetration for self, 15, and increase crit damage for self, 10. The others are uh, increase wind attack for allies, 15, and increase HP for wind, wind ally, which is kind of standard for all the units that are coming up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then if I look at the stats, again, agility is, is the main thing that we're going to look at. It's uh, If you add up all the, the board and the 
main stats and everything. It's 68 agility, which is on the high scale there. It's very, very nice. Um, and uh, her resistance is, is okay. Um, it's 5 slash, 15 pierce, 5 strike, and 15 missile. missile. I really like the 15 missile on her, actually, because uh, she has additional chance to increase missile resistance. So uh, part of the reason why I think she's so good. <laughs> we'll keep going, though. Uh, she has minus 10 to magic, which I think is is fair. Um, you know, Pretty standard for somewhere. Yeah. Is melee, whatever units. Right. Uh, and then, so her status uh, resistance is 50% resistance to berserk, uh, 50 blind, and 10 paralyze. It's not the greatest. It's not stuff that we... I mean, it's, it's okay, but we really would rather see, like, Stop or Charm or something, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, and she has a pretty high attack as well, 502 attack. It's it's pretty high. Uh, now, if you go to the skills, I, I'm actually going to start with, like, her main job skill instead of the passives, because I, I think this is what really makes her, like, the first skill, uh, actually, not the first skill, the, the Blinding Javelin skill. With the upgrade, it has a range of 6 and height range of 5. And I believe because oh the height range of five, if you have two heights above something, like you're standing two above the enemy, it goes up by one. Yep. Like like sharpshoot. So uh, and she also has on her sub uh, dragon dragon standard, so she can get move four with a six range javelin throw that can and increase a jump the range. Two and yeah. Yeah. Wow. So like I I I think she's. Um, She's like almost like Federica in a, in a way, like you know, like very very high range. And when Fed like this skill has the same modifier as Federica's sharpshoot, one sixty five. So you, you can kind of think her as Federica. Um, I, I mean, you know, Federica still has has more range, but because of Federica's range, we are giving her additional uh, missile resistance to kind of be able to take on Federica. Right. So I I, I think you know I, I think this is really what sets her apart, like that six range. Uh, range height five skill is is really what sets her apart. So I think with that in mind, we can like take a look at the rest of her skills. Um, so for her passives, she has trick, uh, trick lancer mastery. That's the upgraded version. It increases critical rate and critical damage and defense penetration forty, which is the standard for most seniors nowadays. She has unwavering javelinier, which uh, which basically upgrades the blinding javelin skill to increase to. To nullify confusion and stun for self. That's kind of strange. No, so what it is is uh, it upgrades Binding Javelin and also nullifies confusion and stun. It's not oh, attached okay. to the Oh, okay, so that gives yeah, it yeah. the plus one range. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so that's then, what's giving the plus one. Yep. Okay, so then, yeah, then that's a that's a good skill. You must always take it. <laughs> <laughs> must, <laughs> you <laughs> must <laughs> always take it. <laughs> um, and then uh, she has the other standard stuff, which is uh, jump plus one, self sacrifice, HP plus one. Um, I mean, there's a, there's only like self sacrifice is okay, but I really hate the uh, minus resistance. So I think most of the time we would probably take trick lancer core, sorry, trick lancer lower and unran unwavering javelinier anyway. Yeah, you're just taking other two passives for sure. Yeah, I think those are the ones that makes the most sense to take like self-sacrifice um, maybe for like pve content or something where you need to just pump out damage but if you're in pvp you want that six range and that defense penetration so yeah there's really nothing yeah yeah nothing else you can take there um so we'll go over her other skills her counters aren't really that exciting so i don't really want to go into it it's just <laughs> an actual well she has uh, she does have the one that's preemptive which is cool but oh okay oh yeah yeah that's a preemptive one that can do a trick I learned the symbol this time. <laughs> no more saying it's the same shit as we always have and being wrong about it. <laughs> All right. So her uh, first skill is called Trick Trust. Um, it decreases agility and attack while causing Pierce attack of range 2, height range 1. Um, this seems to be her spamble ability. It's only 17 AP and has 6 casts. Uh, then she has an increased attack buff for all allies for 3 turns. I don't know how I feel about that one, to be honest, because usually there's a second, like something else with that. Yeah, so it sure. feels kind of lackluster. It's, it's nice. 40% attack is nice for all allies, but it just feels lackluster because I usually see something else with it. I wish it had either the targeted plus, so you could give it like a little bit of a range, kind of like a 9S has on his assault field, or yeah. give it like a massive TP cost so that it gives her a lot of AP to keep fighting. Yeah, I agree. Like just 40% and getting like 11 AP is like meh. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Strange. Um, just and use her next buff. 
Master Full Melody. Uh, so increases missile resistance, which is what I talked about. It's really important for her, so she can actually go toe to toe with the Rangers. Uh, and then increases accuracy for allies, increases pierce attack for allies, and the miss missile resistance is also a uh, for allies as well. And it's a 30 TP cost. So this is like you will definitely want to take this over the attack buff if you only have one. Uh, if you only have time to do one. Um, and and I always really like to have like accuracy on on a buff so that I don't have to bring a TMR that increases accuracy. So I I think this is a like a superb skill and. Like if you're do like you know if you're fighting against other ev evasion comps, this is really nice to have as well. So, uh, yeah, good, good, all <laughs> good. <buff. laughs> yeah. Uh, we already talked about blinding javelin. So the next one is barrier break lance. Uh, uh breaks barrier for target and it is a <laughs> range of three. <laughs> barrier break lance. Hmm. I don't know what that does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hey. Uh, I wonder what the, the Japanese Google Chrome translation is going to call it. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> oh, wait, she's not in J she's not yeah, in JP she's... yet? Huh. Uh, I, yeah. At least not where the I guess it's going. released this week, so they they probably take another day or something. Fair. Normally yeah. we get it like the week after they get it or something like that. Yeah. So uh, this one, so the very rare glance can actually be upgraded with their... Uh, with her EX upgrade, and this one also now reduces counter chance by 100. I really like the reduced counter chance. Unfortunately, it doesn't really matter for EXX, it still reflects the first one anyway, so I really wish that wasn't the case, but damn it. It's like, <laughs> I, I think it's a missed opportunity. I think that was that's what people really care about, like, you know, not getting reflexed, and then that's the one skill that bypasses it. So I wonder if they even know it interacts like that. Yeah, that's true. Could, like, could just I could completely see, like, oh yeah, no, we release this thing. They'll be happy about it. It'll it'll help the reflex <laughs> thing. People will complain, and then they'll be like, oh, the reflex is this, and they're just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, and then uh, so uh, her her job level one twenty skill is javelin fall, which decreases defense uh, by thirty, and it's a AOE plus one area. It's you still have to kind of aim it linearly, similar to Kane's uh, LB. Yeah. Um, and it has a sharpshoot modifier of 165. So that's her main job skills. And then she has two uh, sub job skills. The first one is called AP Break Lands, which I really like. Which I really like. In addition to um, doing 165 damage in a three range range height one area, she also decreases peer, sorry decreases AP by 20 when performing a critical hit for target. I really like that. I like I like AP stealing abilities or decreasing AP, AP abilities. I think that's that's neat, um, and then and she also has cross break, which decreases critical evasion by thirty for three turns, which is kind of meh. I, I, I don't. Know. It's a nice AOE know. though. It's two in every direction, which could be good. There's definitely some yeah. cute uh, setups. Your your opponent could try to dodge something like AOEs, and that actually just still catches them. So mm -hmm. that could be kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it has niche uses for outright damage, I guess. Um, yeah, and then she has soldier and dragoon as the as the sub jobs, and I think dragoon would yeah. for PV for manual PVP especially. I think dragoon is what people mostly want to go for for the drag dragoon standard, uh, for move one jump one and the jump ability, which kind of lets you stay in the air for a while. So just don't level that jump. I love how that's like the staple now. It's just like never ever level your jumps on any of your units. <laughs> let them stay in the air forever. Like all my units now, it's like I'm I've been maxing all their abilities. Jumps just one. Except for Victora, because I maxed that ages ago. But yeah, it's the same. I always look for that, and I like don't level this because <laughs> you can't unlevel it. It's stupid. <laughs> yeah. No. All right, and then her uh, limit burst decreases PS resistance by thirty eight percent for three turns, and it does two hundred percent damage in a range three height range two area. So overall, I think it's a very solid unit, uh, especially with that six range javelin throw which can potentially increase your increase the the further high height you are i think that's that's an insane skill especially with like she's meant to be this like really high critical damage dealer because she has crit damage in both her passives and in her masteries so i'm assuming she'll be doing a lot of damage anyway and then very solid unit i, I think she's like she's gonna be really powerful you know it's extra annoying too. Uh, that first of all, she's gonna be really good against Earth Evade teams with a built-in accuracy buff and the fact that she's wind. 
and Pierce is not something you commonly build against. I think she'll do pretty well into those like Kato and Zazan sort of teams. Um, but uh, something funny about range unit, uh, like Frederica style, like gunner ranger units that use missile damage and missile abilities, uh, they don't like when you stand next to them because uh, they can't really hit you unless they can aim at something behind you. Um, if you binding javelin and immobilize them, because it has a fifty percent chance on crit, which is going to be multiplied by faith, and typically I think their faith is relatively high. For status effects, you could just stand next to them while they're immobilized and they can't hit you anymore. Um, that could be really funny. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, a little niche I, I use totally something there. Yeah. I, I totally forgot to say that you should get 50% chance to immobilize. I think that's huge too. Yeah, it's, and specifically against those matchups. If you don't one-shot them, like, you just stand next to them and be like, what's up? Like, can't do anything. Even for, like, like melee units, usually they don't have range 6 abilities. So if you're able to immobilize them from mm -hmm. range 6, they can't even hit you. So. Right. It works both ways, yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. It's a very, very solid ability. And, I mean, tacking on, it decreases healing power by 60. So, like, if it's a... Say it's like an evasion, like an Elena, Yuna, something team, probably Jaden, which kind of makes this moot, but you could, like, immobilize the Elena, and then Yuna goes to healer and just does a little bit. Like, it's not even that much, so... Yeah, pretty solid. Definitely selling me a little bit on it, but I, I just don't know if I can do it right now, because... Uh, Want to save up for um, Golbez when he comes out. So Golbez and Rosa EX. So I'm like, I got to hold out. But definitely <laughs> tempting. Yeah. I don't really have solid wind units. Um, I, I do, but nothing like crazy. Like my little Lila is not EX 120'd. Um, Oldua's on the way, but that's Oldua. I don't know. <laughs> like, I feel like she's not actually necessarily a mono wind unit. Like, you don't even need to. Like, like she has a lot of utility without being mono win. So I think this is actually a good example of a unit that I would put on a team to just be part of a team, whether it be mixed Pierce or just mixed overall. Um, right. What do you feel about that? Yeah, I think she's I like I think she's really good. Uh, like just on like any kind of team, like you can like you you can build her as kind of like a tanky person to just immobilize people because usually people don't build immobilize resist right. So uh, you can just immobilize people with her, have somebody else nuke, have like a Black Rose Helena, who's typically can't, you know, approach people because she she gets killed before she approaches, right? But with her, you can pair with her and, and run her like that. You can run her also with like a Victor or something and just slash Pierce chains. I think there's a lot of different ways you can build her, right? So I don't, I, I don't see her like only being on win teams. I think she just, she's just good and able to be on lots of different teams. And actually even more on that, line like i'm looking at this vision card uh this vision card is like multiple vision cards in one this is actually fucking insane i, I haven't looked at what the stats were on it mm -hmm. so it's 281 hp meh we're getting there though 30 ap is really good um and then 152 attack is pretty decent okay. for wind units it, uh wind pierce units specifically oh, i'm sorry no that's for the ability wind units it gives uh 14 accuracy weird number but acceptable but then it has an ability that deals 165 with a triple hit and two casts and decreases critical evasion, which is interesting. Um, puts the vision card cost up a little bit, which sucks, but um, maybe the ability uh, is worth it, especially because it does take on her element. Then it gives 20% pierce attack to her and Winter Mashri. Uh, of course, as always, we have to have the off element uh, 20 missile attack for Winter Victra. But then you get to the party abilities... And it's this is the fifty percent attack for wind units. It gives thirteen crit as the like secondary stat, and then the maxing is twenty five percent HP. Uh, what? <laughs> this is like Golem, Ifrit, and whatever Pierce thing of choice all in one. Like this, this is crazy. I I did not realize. I haven't gone through all the updates to it. This is crazy. Wow. Are you yeah. gonna build this card even if you're not gonna build her? No. No. Oh, it's so <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I like. I'm probably not gonna run mono wind though. So. That's my point. You don't even need to be mono wind like this. This is an example of one of those times. I think this is a unit that can be self-contained with this card. Now, again, if you're not building her, maybe it's not as worth. But. Right. Fifty percent attack with twenty-five percent HP and a relevant attack modifier equipped and just accuracy tacked on there too like 
that's a crazy just generic stat pool to pull from where it's almost like you're having party abilities from other units and you could just stick that on another team of like a duo that oh, oof, this is hmm Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I did not realize how good this card was. Wow. Because, like, I, I think there's a... We could make a tier list sometime, maybe, for fun on one of the podcasts of, like, what we would put the stats as, like, what we want to see most in a vision card. I think that'd actually be really fun. I'm going to I'm gonna yeah. look into doing that. Uh, But I, I it's, like, attack 50%, HP 25%, agility 15 are, like, three of my top ones that I want to see across the elements. Like, I want to have that option available. And this ticks two of those boxes. <laughs> So it's, it's just very, very good. Oh my lord! Man, man, man. All right. Anyway, sorry. Any more comments about this before we jump into class match stuff? Uh, no, that's it. All right. So class match stuff. Uh, how are you feeling about it? Uh, are I, I think you're surprised about the rules, right? Uh, yes and no. I mean, like it wasn't that much of a surprise, but I was still kind of expecting the the quick and rule that we kind of skipped over. So I hadn't really practiced for this at all. I hadn't really looked at a comp because that's what that's what I was looking at. I knew this was a possibility, but I also didn't want to put too much into something that I didn't know, right? So yeah. So I, I I didn't get any practice done or anything, and I might even end up using the team that I used last class match with similar rules. So, uh, map seems kind of interesting though. I mean, it has like tons of height variations, but it still seems kind of close enough that you can kind of reach people on the first turn. So it's, it's mines one, thing. right? Yeah. Yeah. So nullify quicken and decrease healing power fifty, correct? Yes. Okay. So I'm looking at the map now. Yeah. This. Uh. Let me see. So one, two. It actually is a lot closer than I was thinking. I was thinking this is the same as that guild battle map, right? That we had for a while, and then we may have had it in the arena. I don't remember, but. I think I, so. Yeah. Where they kind of they start pretty spread apart on, by default, and then they kind of just like there's that weird like crane in the middle they have to walk around, and then you're kind of mm -hmm. it's very high on the sides. Yeah, but here so, they actually start like really like they start closer. So yeah, one five. So you could be within depending on how they spawn, you could be within three spaces of them if you have like five movement or four movement or something. You can, oh. They're still quicken. So what what sort of strategies do you see being really impactful on here? My first thought is obviously like the the rangers and stuff because there's a lot of height variation here that they can play with. Um, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think like especially with how quick and I think rangers uh, already have a leg up, and then um, I also think that uh, well, I, I I think keen blade is probably going to be in like most teams. Like some someone's going to use keen blade. I don't know if people will use like cheese blade with uh, with uh, Ildira, because I mean she's not ex yet, and I don't know if 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 like a one unit can kind of one shot everybody anymore. Water. Because... <laughs> she's <laughs> well, also there's water, water too, but you don't need. To, but <laughs> if you're going first anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, right? yeah, that's fair. But I just don't know if there's that one unit that can just one shot most units anymore because people are just getting more and more bulky. Uh, I I hope that's not possible, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um. But yeah, I mean. So, so with the addition of like uh, Hello and Leela, right? I I think Earth teams are going to be a little bit more, um, not as prevalent as they were to like last class match because last class match was a similar rule set in the sense that we we didn't have quicken again. Uh, we had healing, but you know there's no quicken. So and a lot of people were running uh, Earth with uh, Ketone and UR Zazan and regular Zazan, like something like that. Um, and I. I mean, it could still work, but I think they're going to have a little bit more trouble simply because now Halloween Leela exists and she has a guaranteed hit in a large AoE and AoE 6, like, insane. Uh, yeah, she's insane. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, I think they, they kind of peeled back a little bit because of that. So it's interesting to see how much ice we're going to expect because of Halloween Leela's <laughs> presence. So I, I, I think it'll be interesting. I really wish that Light and Dark didn't exist so that that kind of dynamic could could go on like you know why one like wind is uh wind is better than earth uh ice is better than wind so on and so on and that's that's an interesting dynamic to play around with but light and dark has to <laughs> yeah damn it <laughs> now what's uh there's a there's a cost limitation right it's not listed on where the visions count it's two thirds oh for units two th oh so yeah. the cards and everything could be whatever you Ooh. Yeah, yeah. okay so i forget my math here my Calculate is probably gonna pop right up in your face. Oh no, it's on the other monitor. Perfect. Okay, so two thirty. 
So if I take a 90 unit, I get 140 points left, which is... Oh, okay. Oh, well, Shell can't quicken. Damn. I was going to say I could use Shell plus uh, two 90s. Hmm. I mean, I guess I could do, like... Oh, I don't need Gilgamesh, though, because I don't have quicken. He feels like... Gilgamesh actually does feel a lot worse without quicken, though. It's kind of weird yeah. how... I mean, he, he can hold Keenblade, which is valuable, but I wonder if, like, like Barrett has the height stuff going for him. Well, not necessarily, because he's a gunner that has the... The gunners don't get extra range from their abilities, so maybe not there. Just, like, theory crafting my ice team here. My, my first thought is I want Oron to deal with uh, a mix of evasion units with Banishing Blade, as well as if Halloween Lily comes out, he's very good at dealing with magic damage units, especially if they're wind. <laughs> so... This feels like a great option. And then from there, it's like, what do I play with? Hmm. And you said you were going to use the same team. What, what were the three again? So I was using uh, Jaden, Crowell, and uh, Regular Mont. Okay. Jaden, Crowell, Regular Okay. Like I, What I really wanted to do was use like Noctis, Halloween, Leela, and um, Victra. But I, like, I haven't practiced at all, and my Noctis is still level 100, and I don't really want to rush everything now. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I like I, I have to like figure it out. I have to like figure out their age, like agility and tune it and all that stuff. And I don't really have the time for all that right now. So <laughs> fair. I'm just like, damn it. Okay, I'll just go with the last team I played. Yeah, so you can also use sixty, eighty, ninety, which would be like, well, it'd be like Curry to deal with evasion stuff. Plus, some just being annoying on the side. You could do like Curry or on. Somebody costs 80. Man, all these 90 cost units really do throw like a wrench into this planning because I go to like, I'm like, oh, I can just use this unit. And it's like, oh, wait, they're, I, I, I can't. Like, Aranea is 90, so I can't use her. Fryavia is only 80, right? Not that I think I'd be bringing Fryavia on a map like this, but I think she'd struggle a little bit. Like, Salir is 90. Good lord. And then Curry is 60, right? He's not 50. Oh, Curry's 50. Okay, so I could use like Valentine Salir plus Barrett with Curry on the side. I've done that team before, it's pretty fun. Hmm. Lots of thoughts. But uh let's see here. Do we know where the crystals are yet? I think there's no crystals on this map. No crystals? Mm -hmm. I feel like I have to go I can't even like spawn on I can't I can't go into I'd have to go into a match to like check the Check if they're there or not, because you don't get to see them in formation. But yeah, they're not labeled on the map. That's really strange. How do you feel about that? I don't like that at all. Yeah, I I don't like it. I think it's a. I I think just having that there and then using it as a strategic point to kind of capture was was interesting and cool. So I think they're actually removing it like going forward. Unfortunately, what? that's what I heard somebody say. That's like so one of the best mechanics of class match. Yeah, like exactly, what? I think that's really dumb, but that's what I heard. <laughs> So that's disappointing. That's super disappointing. Like that part of the strategy and benefit to playing in a class match is either fighting for those crystals or being able to have build variety because of the crystals and you don't necessarily need to have bells. But without that are they just like trying to sell the new unit that you get for free that gives you an AP team <laughs> Like what what's what's happening here? I don't right? I don't I don't get it. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, super disappointing. Know. Yeah. Any predictions on what teams are going to do well, or or what you plan to see the most of based on this? Besides, besides, I mean, Frederica is evergreen, but um, I um, guess maybe like Jaden teams, like Jade. I mean, people won't be bringing Fiji though, so like Jaden, uh, what's her name, Fina, and then whatever fills in the points after that. Well, I wonder how many people would uh, like max up the new Loartha within like today or tomorrow at. Because I think she would be great, especially with like range height five, range six skill. Yeah. Uh, and she can pair with uh, Victra, who's 70 cost. And she, like you can do like her, Victra, and Halloween Leela. And that's the team, right? Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like if people are willing to spend the money for it, I think she'll be very popular. Uh, so, I don't know. And then. Honestly, it really depends because, like, if a lot of people are using Halloween Leela, then Ice is obviously going to be, you know, up there. But I don't know. 
So it's really hard to say because now it's just like before it was just the Earth was really good and there was two B and Tifa, but I, I don't know. It was still kind of hard to play them without Halloween Lila backing them up. Mm-hmm. So now that they're there, Earth is not as strong as it once was. So now it's actually I think balanced. So because of that, I don't know actually how, like what we would see. Ketone might actually not be so good on this map just because there's so much height, so it's hard to get Rainforce off. So because of that, Earth might just start at a negative negative anyway. So uh, I think Wind and Ice, because of that, do well. I will say one semi-counter argument to that is a lot of the map, at least in the middle, um, the I think every square is accessible linearly by one of the same height. So if you, there's a, there's a, like, there's two twos, then two threes, then two twos, then two threes, then two twos. So like, if you're on any of those, at some point you can get drain forest. Um, the ones in the middle as well, once you get to like the side, or sorry, towards the middle, so middle downwards, outward sides towards spawn, then you get to like the two, three, four and like really uneven stuff. But in the middle, you could actually, it's really not awful. Um, it's a lot actually more symmetric and less random than I was remembering from when we had this as a guild map. But I do agree, it's not going to be simple. Um, I think it can be navigated, but yeah, it's not going to be super simple. I do like what you're saying, though, about the, uh, the fact that, you know, Leela and Wind being strong makes Earth a little weaker, which then, you know, that can cause Rangers to come back a little bit, because if the Earth was doing really well against the Lightning, then the Ice also comes back in and beats the Wind, and then... We have this whole like circle, and we're ignoring fire and water, because uh, <laughs> water water just gets really hard checked by lightning. Um, but I mean, hey, if the I feel like everything has a chain effect, so yeah, wind pushing out earth brings back lightning, which pushes out water. So I guess maybe not. Do I have to worry about fire? Is that is that the call here? You just go mono fire and just destroy the ice <laughs> teams that are supposed to do really well. You don't have to worry about water too much, and you can probably tank the uh, missile damage with your missile resist uh, king mod and stuff. <laughs> I mean, I I know some some guys that play just like fire. I I don't remember the names exactly, but I even thought Saki like, is the main one that I think of. There's another one I think is far. I think he he plays. Uh, oh, that's, that sounds familiar, actually. He plays, I think, like the, the special eye regalia and King Mont, I think, and uh, and Mish. Plays Mish. So there you My go. My <laughs> hero. <laughs> I actually have never seen the regalia Mashri, like ever. Like in anything. <laughs> oh, okay. Well. That sounds terrifying <laughs> for me. But Which I don't know if it's going to be as powerful this time because, I mean, so the last time I played with that, it was like it was really difficult to deal with because. She kept healing King Mont over and over and approaching. And well, this time it's 50 per- minus 50 percent heal, right? So that's, uh, yeah, I don't know. So we'll have to see. I don't know. It's, I don't know what's going to happen with that. And I feel like uh, I want to make some like, bold predictions, so... but can't Sorry? think of any. I said, I'm sitting here like trying to think of like some bold predictions to make just to like kind of put it out there, but I really have no idea because it is so wide open <laughs> and this map is, this map is interesting. But what were we saying? No, yeah, I was saying, so because of that, I don't know if Fire is really going to take off, because I think uh, Special Air Regalia was, was a centerpiece with, with King Mont, and uh, she is going to be a little bit weaker because her healing is, is, is down, so I don't know if that I don't know if Fire is going to take off. Which might mean that Ice is what you should be playing, since you don't have weaknesses. What Ice units would you want to play on here? Well, Witchera, uh, actually, no, I should. Yeah, Witchera has that, um, that uh, what's it called? That Dragoon Dive, right? Which has, which has more range. Uh, sorry, which has more range height. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't remember her job level one twenty skill. Does it have a nice? That, that's range? the that's the like plus one t- turns her into a Valkyrie basically. Oh yeah. That- um, I don't remember what the height is though. Let me check here. Uh, my Victra. Uh, the reason I ask is my Victra's level one fifteen. And okay. she's not quite 120 yet, but I could definitely uh, use some resources to get her to 120. I'm, I'm, I think she's level like 23, so she needs like, like just over a hundred uh, metals or uh, orbs more. Yeah, so she gets Frost Reaver, which is move to target panel. It has a range height of two and an AOE of one, and then it goes in two in every direction after traveling, and then it has a decent mob with a chance of frostbite. 
Uh, but yeah, she does have Dragon Dive, which range of th uh, 3 plus 1. Um, good range height, decent AoE height. Um, obviously, Vertical is always the one that you can nail people with. <clears throat> but then the Shattering Dive is the the horizontal jump upgrade, which gets... It's still range 5, but it has uh, range height at least a little now. bit of height. Yeah, and then also breaks defense. And this one doesn't lock on, though, right? No. That's uh, I think that's that's Christmas Mastery, right? Winter Mastery that locks on. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So yeah, be Victor, which nice does have seventy costs, so you can start putting the seventy plus like a ninety. It's like having two eighties, and then one sixty. What do you have left? You have seventy costs left. You can try to shore up your weaknesses with something, or I mean, honestly, I could just play Curry, but Curry's yeah, pretty solid. It's it's um, it's also gonna be weird just because you can you don't have AP crystals anymore, so you have you might want to bring bells and then you know what are you, what are you gonna do with cane blade and so on and so on. So it's gonna be interesting, I think. Victor can use cane blade. Sorry, who? Victor can use cane blade. Victor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but then um, so you might be but down on AP. Bells. That's yeah. what I mean, yeah. Like because you can't pick up AP crystals, so you have to really make the choice if you want to bring cane blade or um. Uh, bells on her that's a really awful change i'm actually very angry about this the fact that there's no crystals to fight over and play around oh man so disappointing um but yeah i guess we'll have a lot we'll probably have a lot to talk about i feel like there'll be a lot of surprises this class match by the end uh so maybe we'll wrap up here and then be able to kind of dive into that more uh next week and hopefully daniel will be able to join us next week um but yeah any other uh, parting thoughts before we sign out uh, because everyone started like at a different rank, right? So I started at fourteen hundred points, which is rank <laughs> six, and I haven't started yet. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> so what the hell? <laughs> so yeah, this is a uh, this is nuts. <laughs> Plus, somebody saying uh, Gargus wind slash to combo with RNA's high wind. What? <laughs> JB's getting wild. They're talking about HLL a little bit. I'm in the, the Discord now. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> oh, Oberon is a factor, too. Forgot about Oberon. Uh, could be very good against... Because without Quicken, a lot of people will turn to things like Haystega and just Haste in general. So Oberon, could, his TMR could cause some problems for those teams. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. I'm just talking about using Lucio. Bold. That's crazy. But yeah, I think we'll have a lot to talk about next week. Um, but yeah, if you uh, have no other thoughts, then uh, I have been Zach Burrell. Thank you for watching. And I'm Luck. And we'll see you next time.